Welcome to In Real Time, where we as Heights Church are inviting you in for real conversations about leading people, organizations, and change in the new normal. We're hoping that our real discussions about our church's journey will help you as you reimagine and rebuild yours. to in real time where we're having real conversations about leading people organization and change and we are extending our conversation about growing your capacity so we're going to keep talking about that today and specifically the topic of growing the capacity of your leadership gifts. We would love it if you hit like and subscribe and the bell notification, of course, so that you can get each episode as it drops. Well, I'm joined with two co-hosts today, so why don't you two introduce yourselves? I'm Jennifer Alessio, and I serve as the children's pastor here and on the management team. Great. My name is Justin. I'm also one of the pastors. I'm a life groups pastor, a young adults pastor, and I oversee our hospitality teams. Wonderful. Yeah. So we're talking about capacity, and there's a lot of ways that you could really kind of define this or think about it. So for us, how are we defining it and thinking about it? So for us, we're defining capacity as the maximum amount that something can contain. Yeah. So if you're thinking about a box, the box is a metaphor for how much we as at any given time can handle. Yeah. yeah so that yeah. so we all have a limit. We all yeah, have a capacity. Yeah. We all have a maximum amount of things that we can handle at one time. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk so, about some of the things that leaders actually deal with that you can only put in that box. What would make <laughs> that list? That's unique to us as leaders. Well, it's the pressure, first off. I mean, how much pressure can you take before you mm. crack? Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. pressure is a big one. That's right. It's That's definitely right. one right out of the gate that I think of, like, how much pressure I have as a pastor compared to when I was just a, a cook or a yeah. chef, you know? I mean, yeah, it's good. Changes things. Yeah. What else yeah. is on that list? Decisions. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many decisions can we handle yeah. making at any given time? Yeah. And and that impact so many people. Exactly. In positive or potentially negative ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 Well, then That's you have the, the tension too of just the weight of making those decisions, right? Mm, like yeah. who who am I gonna make upset about mm. this? Who am I gonna make happy? Mm -hmm. How do we walk those tensions out? How do we yeah. help cast I mean, like all of that stuff, there's only so much of that we can handle. Decision fatigue is a real thing. It is a real it is. thing. It's a real thing. That's and right. People That's deal right. with it all the time. So Yeah, absolutely. There's a couple other things on here that we probably should mention oh, as well. Yeah. Something about wounds. Oh. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, yeah. We tending gotta... to the wounds that we receive. And yeah. I mean, that's the reality. Nobody's whining about it. But the truth nope. is, leaders only have so much capacity for the wounds that we receive. Yeah. So um, we have to grieve them. We do. Yeah. We need to grieve and those. have time to process them so that we yeah. can be healthy. Yeah, absolutely. And lead from a healthy place. Yeah. yeah. So all this is part of our capacity. Mm -hmm. We can reach our limits with them. And also almost, almost uh, only <laughs> so much time in a day. Yeah. Exactly. Hours. Like that's, that's a, all. that's it. And only so much time we can dedicate towards our ministry yeah. and our family time yeah. as well. So there's just, all right. those tensions that yeah. we have to weigh. Yeah, so all of those are on the table as we're talking about leadership giftings, mm -hmm. capacity when we reach our limits. And mm -hmm. so it's important that we are having this conversation for leaders. We want to help people think about this a little more clearly. And I think about, uh, I've mentioned on a couple of episodes previous to this, that this all started really... Well, I should say it all came back mm -hmm. <laughs> as my wife uh, last summer says, I feel really bad for you in the midst of the <laughs> pandemic and all that. And she just said, you know, there's just been so much happening. And I said, I feel bad for me. And I was whining about it and moping around for a couple of days until God just finally said to me, Craig, I built you for more. Stop whining. Stop this, mm, you know, because you do, you get into this rut of feeling sorry for yourself. It's okay. easy to do. And uh, I've had a lot of temptation and opportunity to do that over the last three years. And so it's important that I realize, hey, I am built for more. And I'm just hitting capacities, mm -hmm. but those can be expanded. And so it's important we think about that. Yeah. So I started 
to pray for more capacity in my life and just to think about this topic a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So that brings us to where we're at today, which is the idea of capacity for leadership gifting, Mm. because often we can think that what we have is what we have. But I think more important is, as we looked in our first episode on capacity, we looked at the parable of the the three servants. One was given one, one was given two talents, the other Mm -hmm. one was given five talents. But each of them was given something that, that clearly their master believed they could handle. Right. It was a finite amount. Mm -hmm. It wasn't more than they could handle, but then they had to decide what will they do with that? How will they steward it? Mm -hmm. And that's really, really something I think is important when we think about leadership gifting. We each have been given gifts and certain amounts of those gifts. Mm -hmm. And we don't need more than that right now. We just need to steward well Mm -hmm. what is in our hands already. That's a great reminder. So we got to start somewhere. Got to start somewhere. Um, I love coaching football, did it for 12 years. One of the things that is important to note is that each season, as you progress from a freshman to a sophomore to a junior to a senior in high school football, your players don't start where they did last year. They start you hope, where they left off Mm -hmm. at the end of the season. They grow through each season. Mm -hmm. Do leaders grow through seasons? Absolutely. Yeah, at least we can. We can. It's a choice. We hope that we do. That that would be the hope and the goal, wouldn't it? Right, right. right. what otherwise it was a waste of pressure, stress, all of the stuff I that you experienced. It's true. If you don't grow or learn some lesson through it all, I yeah, mean, that's that's it, it'd be a, just a tragedy, frankly. And it's what I love about football. Football is one of those sports you can learn so much from. Do mm. you do you learn things from a win? Yes. Do you learn things from a loss? Absolutely. I think you learn more sometimes. Yeah, I you think learn you what do. not to do. You do. And that's the same way in ministry. We win some, we lose some, mm-hmm. but you can you you can learn through any of them. And I think about those leaders who think, well, I've got this degree and I've got that degree and I sit on this board or whatever influence we think we have. Right. I think of Peyton Manning right before he won his Super Bowl with the Broncos, and he said, quote, the summer prior, he said, if I'm not being coached, and everybody knew this guy was already in the Hall of Fame before he ever had a Super Bowl, mm. before he won it. He said, if I'm not being coached, I'm angry. Mm. Mm. In other words, here's the guy that we all know is the best or right. one of the best, if you're Tom Brady fans, mm-hmm. who, and he says, I still need to be coached. Yeah. And so who of us as leaders should not think that we still have growth mm-hmm. to come into our life. So when it comes to giftings, this is really, really important. So there are giftings that are unique to each of us. Yeah. And the, and the roles that we have. Well, yeah, and yeah. we're not, we're not necessarily talking about spiritual gifts specifically either. We're talking right. about leadership, leadership, gifts. Gifts. leadership, yeah. leadership yes. wiring. I think that's something we want to make sure that we make clear because I know when I heard this, when we were talking about this topic of this podcast, I immediately thought of spiritual gifts. Mm-hmm. So I think it's just important for us to help our listeners recognize Great that there's point. a difference Great about point. what we're talking about. So yeah. it's good. Um, So when it comes to a leadership gift that you feel like right now, all of us are truly working on something to grow Mm -hmm. a capacity area, Um, we're we're trying to blow out that wall or blow Mm -hmm. out that obstacle to expand our capacity. Uh, do you have an area in your life, Justin, that oh, you yeah. are working on right now? The uh, so I'm I'm a pretty decent recruiter when it comes to recruiting leaders, but what I need is I need leaders of leaders. So I need mm. like that next level of leaders mm. that I need to yeah. recruit. So I need these like <clears throat> high capacity leaders that could literally replace me. Not that I'm looking to get replaced, but yeah, no, we're not I, looking to do that. No, I just need like I need. I, I think that's one of the things about good leadership is you're always looking to find somebody that could fill your shoes. Yeah. You want those folks around you to be better than you at mm-hmm. different things. Mm-hmm. And so I'm looking for leaders who lead leaders really well at yeah. this point. And honestly, that's, really that's that's my struggle. At that's it right there. Yeah, so you're trying to grow one. that capacity. Yeah, I love absolutely. that. Absolutely. Pastor Jennifer, how about you? I have several new leaders. And so I'm really working on painting the picture. Mm-hmm. I want to give them the vision of what's a win here in Heights Kids. Yeah. yeah. 
and um, I'm also working on equipping at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So, so really cool. trying to grow that and expand your capacity of being able to do that for your Absolutely. Leaders. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's great. Yeah, and I know for myself right now, I'm working on conflict resolution. Mm. Uh, I think we're all good at conflict, <laughs> right? <laughs> what we're not, not intentionally all good at is conflict resolve. Yes. <laughs> right? Yes. And I want to get good at being able to resolve the conflicts, yeah. not just take them to their inevitable end. I want to be able to get much better at, no, turning this thing around and doing the one thing that everybody thinks can't be done with this conflict. Yeah, and so I want to get better at that. I want to be a better communicator yeah. so that I can uh, take the distractions out of what I'm trying to say and actually just say it. Yes. So uh, those are two areas of capacity. I feel like I really, really uh, am trying to stretch myself in. Yeah. So those are two unique ones. And I realize that everybody has unique areas that they need to grow in. Mm-hmm. But what we thought we would talk about today are five areas that we know are common to all leaders. So what do you All mean? leaders. Not all people, but all leaders. Okay. Fa- they're common to all. These are leadership gifts. Mm. They are truly expectations mm-hmm. of every leader, whether they're said or not. Yeah. They are expected. And I would say in most cases, they're not written down anywhere. But they are expected. Mm-hmm. And so it's important that we call them out. So, uh, tell us what the first one is. It's an acrostic. Yes. Aspire is the acrostic. So the A stands for what? Attract. Attract. So it's attracting leaders. Attracting leaders. This is that old school, let's go recruit and find some yes. people yeah. we want to be a part of. Yeah. If no one's following us, we're not leading anybody. And it's right. recognizing gifts and others yes. that would be a benefit to your team. Yes. That they may not see in themselves. That's mm-hmm. right. That's right. And you need them to join your teams mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. Uh, to be attracted to the mission part that you're a you're, you're part of and that you're leading. <laughs> yeah. So you, you're trying to attract people to this. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and we. this is something that all of us look at and say, oh, duh, of course. It's not really written down, but it is a presupposed idea. But not everybody is good at attracting people. Yeah. Not it can be learned, though. But it can it be It absolutely learned. can Anybody be can learn. Yeah. It just takes starting to try Yeah, and even looking for a mentor. Right. Mm-hmm. Someone that you see is really good at attracting leaders and yeah. meeting with them and asking them to tell you, hey, what do you do? Yeah. And trying it out. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a really important piece because uh, not everybody is good at it, but what we do recognize is we can all grow in this area. It's a leadership gifting, a capacity, if you will, that Mm -hmm. we have of attracting people Mm -hmm. that we can get better at. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, That's good. Okay. Um, And as we walk through the acrostic, it would be good for us to really kind of put a number, maybe one through 10, one being... Not awesome. Oh, dang. The 10 being super awesome. This is awesome. rough, man. This it is rough. Is. Yeah, you... all right. Can you put a number, and I'm not asking the two of you, because I think you both are 10s. Well, uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. That's why you're on my team. Could I put a number on the end? And, oh, yeah. And uh, But Do, would you, you put a number... No. I, I, <laughs> would you put a number on attract this capacity issue that you think you have? And I think for all of us listening into this conversation... Put a number on that, one through 10. It's important. You're either pretty good at it, not very good at it, mm-hmm. or like super good at it. Um, that's that's an important piece. So put a number on that one. And then, so that's A, yeah. uh, which is attract. What's the S? Oh, that's solve problems. Solve problems. I, I, sometimes it just feels like this is all we do, no, right? Like, it's so true. <laughs> so there's it days annoying. where it's like, oh, it's problem fest today, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. The, the nonstop marathon of just, oh, we're going to solve problems. And I just think back to a leadership when you were training us and teaching us and equipping us that you you said, look, this is what leaders do. We solve problems. And yeah. When I connected that dot, I went, oh, that's literally the calling of a leader is to help solve problems. Yeah. It mm. it took the sting of the problem away. And so it doesn't become uh, frustration yeah. for people because you're hearing the same problem, the same problem, the same problem, the same problem, the same problem. Well, it's easy to become frustrated with this person and then this person because you're just hearing the recycled yeah. problem. Yeah. Um, what you need to do is we just need to help paint those. I mean, we can walk them through solutions. Yeah. You know, how, or even, okay, what do you think? Like maybe they can help us find the solution. Yeah. 
you know, what do you think about that? Meaning our team, yeah, really yeah. people around I mean, us. Absolutely. They probably know how to solve it. They might. Right. They just want permission. They, fair. Right. It's fair. Yeah. So I think as each of us as leaders, we think about, you know, our unique context. Yes, there are areas you could point to and say, I need to grow in that area. But this Aspire acrostic, it's pretty much common to everybody. So I just wonder if us as leaders, as we're thinking about it, how good are we at solving problems? Mm -hmm. Could we grow our capacity in this area? Now, mm -hmm. you said something just a couple of minutes ago. You said they're annoying. They are annoying. They are annoying. I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah, they are. Because I love coaching and equipping leaders. I love doing that ministry. You know, yeah. I love sharing the gospel with, with kids. Mm -hmm. I get annoyed with problems because it takes me off of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But honestly, just having the freedom of knowing this is part of my job. Yeah. I'm called to do this and it's the part I get paid for. It's, that's it right there. <laughs> right. So yeah. I have to remind myself this is part of it. Yeah, mm. that's true. The other tool that has helped me in this is just time management. So if I'm managing my time well, mm -hmm. then I can have problems come in and I'm okay. Yeah. If I'm not handling my time well, yeah. it's not a good thing. Yeah. Because I'm already feeling the, the pinch yeah. of not having enough time. Mm hmm and then you just feel overwhelmed when yeah. the problem comes. Yeah. So all of what you're describing comes back to annoying and emotion. Yes. And I think as leaders, we've talked about this uh, at different times, but definitely taking the emotion out of the problem yes. solving is a huge key mm. to growing capacity, mm -hmm. truthfully. Yeah. Because when I'm annoyed at the problems and I get annoyed at problems. You can't see clearly. When I get emotional about problems, yeah. I lose creativity. Exactly. I don't gain creativity. So I lose it. Yeah. And you're stressed. I get Yeah, I get so focused on the annoyance, I'm not solving the problem. Mm. And so it's important we recognize that about mm -hmm. ourselves and we try to grow the capacity and not get into the emotional yes, it's so good. side of that problem. So that's good. Okay, so attract, solve problems. What's the P? Paint the picture. Paint the picture. So Come this is to all of us. Casting vision for yeah. what is the win What's at the win? any yeah. given time mm -hmm. during your ministry. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, inviting people to hop on and join you for that yeah. vision, which is the attract part. Yeah. They all work together. They do. They really do work together. But yeah, this idea of painting the picture, the clear vision, mm -hmm. let's be honest, not everybody's good at that. Mm -hmm. And I haven't always been good at that. And can I do that better? Yeah. It goes back to my communicating piece I was just talking about a couple minutes ago. Mm -hmm. I want to communicate that better because I want to communicate the vision clearer. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to this idea of painting that vision, we all can get better at that. That's a capacity issue of helping people see yeah. what God sees. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So we can get better at that. So I wonder mm -hmm. what our numbers are for attracting people, solving problems, and now painting the picture. Mm -hmm. I think we're hopefully recognizing there are some areas of capacity that mm -hmm. I could grow in for sure. Yeah. But we've got Absolutely. a few other areas that are common to all leaders that we want to bring up as well. So what is the I in the Aspire acrostic? It's inspiring the best efforts out of others. Oh, yeah. It's <clears throat> good. Excuse me. I think this is one that... I... Wait, isn't this all about you? No. You being the hero no. and us watching you and the flying around in a cape? No, I it's always not. think... I, I think the Aspire <laughs> Crossic is actually more about us getting the best out of others. Yes. Yeah. Like, it's really... It's recognizing the simple truth that people are our greatest earthly mm -hmm. resource. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so... If we're not leaning into this, it's because I don't really recognize that I need mm. these these teams, these people, these leaders, mm -hmm. these volunteers. Um, you know, we're it's how we it's how we function. And yeah. so I mean that's my job is to equip them in this right. process. So <clears throat> the inspiring the best efforts, it's really helping people see that there's something in them that they don't see themselves. Yeah. And I can absolutely relate to this. You know, I've been on the receiving end of this before. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, if you listen to the last episode, we talked about that, that, yeah. you know, there was a moment when I wasn't ready and someone spoke into my life and drew that out of me and yeah. God did some great things. And so I find this one a lot of fun mm -hmm. because when you can help somebody really connect to what is in them, yeah. it is a ton of fun to watch them lean into that and just yeah. fly. Like that's it's really good. It yeah. is so cool. Love that. Yeah. Love that. So I definitely think when we're talking about this uh, particular area, inspiring the best in others, 
I think this is an area of capacity. Some no. of us are really good at it, and some of us really aren't that good at it. Mm -hmm. But can we all grow? Oh, can yeah. all grow and get better. Oh, yeah. And do we all need as leaders to inspire those best efforts from our teams? Yeah. We, we do. do. We do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so whether whether it's our team or the team that we're on of peers, oh, we can do that. But I can tell you guys, as a senior lead, you inspire best efforts from me. Mm. You guys do that for me. And I just think that's the beauty of a team. We all do it for one another yeah. mm -hmm. uh, when it's done right and when it's done healthy. Yes. So I think it's a great idea. Grade ourselves one through 10. What number would we put on inspire? All right, we've got two more. So what is the R? The R is relationship. Mm, so it's about keeping your relationship with the other person, with your team in mind. Yeah. In every decision that you're making, interactions that you have, yeah, that people matter. Yeah, their feelings matter. They do. Mm -hmm. They do. Doesn't mean we don't say truth. It doesn't mean we st and don't make say hard truth, decisions. Mm -hmm. But we mean it means that we have grace. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that we're kind. Yeah, and we think about how we would want to be treated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. So we still have the same conversations about truth and hard decisions, but we do it from the basis of. A relationship exactly rather than just this person on the other side of the table that mm -hmm. I don't really care that much about mm. and that's a big piece of our culture a relationship is the basis of every form of communication really what relationship are you in with this person mm -hmm. well it matters and uh, it, it it's it's one of those ways that we are able to gain and have trust with yeah. one another yes yeah and I would say that um, when you are valuing your relationship with someone, you're going to speak truth to them. Yeah. You're just not going to be quiet about an area that you know they need to hear. Yeah, it's good. It's good. So relationships can be hard for some leaders. Yeah. In fact, in fact, I've met quite a few leaders who would say they're very lonely. Mm -hmm. They don't have a lot of relationships, and they have very few deep relationships. I think this is an area that leaders need to recognize. My capacity needs to grow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in this area. I wonder what we number we would give ourselves for mm. that. Yeah. So that's, that's important. Again, it's a leadership gifting that's common to us all. All right, we got one more. Mm -hmm. oh, one more. Uh, equip. We need equip. to train our people. We do. We 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 got to give you the tools. Like we've 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 brought you in. We've recruited you. We've yeah. inspired you. Yay! Yeah. Now what? Like we got to give you the tools to do the job. That's right. Uh, we got to teach you, train you, encourage you, equip you. I mean, all of those things. So this equipping piece is: let me show you the heart of God. Let me train you in this mm -hmm. process. Good. Let me show you how to pass it on. Yeah. Um, Here at our church, I know it's important for us. We we take. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12, very seriously, where we recognize that the role of Christian leaders mm -hmm. is to equip the church yep. for their works of ministry, their good yes. works. Yeah. That's our job. So mm -hmm. literally we say around here all the time, you know, we don't hire, I didn't hire any of you and I wasn't hired to do the work of 20. Mm -hmm. We hire in order to put 20 into ministry yeah. through yes. you. And so that we are multiplying our efforts. We all know that we're getting ministry done, but we're getting it done through people. There's very few things that we alone have to do by ourselves. Yeah. There's a few, there's a few, but very few. Yeah, mm -hmm. teaching the sermon on Sunday mornings is mostly going to be just me. Mm -hmm. I yes. can't just hand that off. The board would not be happy with me if I did that every week. <laughs> but that's important. I know mm -hmm. that. But most other things can be done by other people, and it's mm -hmm. important that we continue to recognize that. Well, that's what equipping comes along. Yeah. Because nobody wants to be given a responsibility and then no way to actually do it well. Right. Yep. They don't want that. They want to be equipped and empowered to accomplish great things. Mm -hmm. So we get to do that, but not everybody's good at that. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if we graded ourselves, where we would grade ourselves, one through 10, what number would we give ourselves for equip? Again, it's a leadership gift, a leadership skill, if you will, that we can all grow in. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So Aspire is an acrostic we use often around here to just describe the the 
Well, it's written rules and expectations for us that we have of one another. You have them of me. In the game plan. And I have it of you. It's oh, yeah. in the game plan right here written. Now. Uh, but in many cases, and I'll say uh, in every other case of church I've been a part of, it was never written. It was always expected, but never written down. Mm. Well, we just wrote them down. And I think it's important that we realize these are gifts and skills. So yeah. when we think about attract, we think about solving problems, painting the, the clear vision, inspiring the best in others. Mm -hmm. And we think about um, uh, relationships, yeah. and we think about equipping. We realize each one of these, if we graded ourselves, we would realize there's our box is only so big, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it can get bigger. Yep. And so yeah. we can grow our capacities in these areas. And this is one of those things that we look and say, as leaders, we need to have faith to grow our leadership gifts. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. All right. So our challenge is just put a number by each one of these on the acrostic yeah. and see where we're at and then start stretching ourselves in those areas. Find people who are doing it better than us. And let's learn from them. Let mm. them speak into our life. Let's watch them. Let's, let's let's get really curious about how they do it well. That's good. Yeah. Hey, anything else we need to say on this one? No, I, don't I think we hit it. All right. Good. Well, thank you for joining me for a real conversation about leading people, organization, and change. And if you liked this uh, time together, please hit like, subscribe, or the bell notification so you receive these podcasts as they drop. And uh, once again, we are so glad that you've been able to join us for In Real Time.